All right, real quick before this video starts, make sure you follow me at 415 Kodai on Twitter and also GFX Comet. And we also got a Discord server. So uh, if you're interested, join. And I hope you enjoy this video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, Aditya, here from GFX Comet. And today I'm going to be doing a highly requested tutorial on Photopea. So for the bunch of you guys that do not know actually what Photopea is, it's an alternative uh, browser, I guess, editor. It's very, very similar to Photoshop, and I've got a ton of DMs, a ton of people on the GFX Comet Discord server, which the link is down below, be sure to join, asking me, how do I start making UIs, how do I start making logos without Photoshop? Uh, this could be they just don't have the money yet, they, they can't find a free download or something like that, they don't want to risk anything, and that's completely understandable, so today I'm going to teach you guys pretty much how to navigate through Photopea, and I'll create a simple UI on here just to show you guys this is completely possible. So a lot of you guys that actually do use Photoshop are very, very, very familiar with this interface. This is pretty much identical to Photoshop. And so for a basic tutorial, I'd say we press File, New, just to open up a new canvas. And the thing I like about Photopea is they include a ton of these pre-made canvases these aren't really useful for UIs but if you're making a project or a poster cover or something like that it's very very ideal another really cool feature about this is they already have pre-recorded dimensions uh, if you're making a thumbnail or something like that these are gonna be really really handy so we'll just use the YouTube cover just because that's a good size canvas everything we make on there will export in high quality so we just click on that and press create and so now what we want to do is we have this locked background and I usually just avoid this by creating a new layer, coming on background, then hitting delete. And after that, now we have a clear canvas to work on. So let me introduce you guys through all the basic tools. So this is our move tool. Let's just place something right here. This move tool allows us to go around here and move any um, asset we put on the canvas. So let's just delete that square for now. Uh, these buttons right here are very important. This is for masking. Um, you guys won't really need that until you get into more in-depth tutorials. Alright, real quick, just to let y'all know, we have a uh, completely new website, as you can see here. So if you hit shop, we have all the categories. So if you go to user interface, as you can see. And uh, the process now should be a lot smoother to download and uh, purchase products. You have a search bar up here and if you want to log in sign up but uh yeah with that being said make sure to check our website at gfxcomma.com hope you enjoy this video tutorials i guess uh this is just for effects so uh if we wanted to if we wanted to sort of take the short way and recolor a ui all we'd have to do is hue says slash saturation we tweak with this to whatever extent we really want the color to be and so next thing is a folder. Uh, you always want to implement folders whenever you're using Photoshop or Photopea in this case, just due to the fact that once you're making UIs, you'll start to have dozens and dozens and dozens of layers that are just going to be unorganized. And this is the create new layer button and this is the trash can button. And you can also use the, the delete key as an alternative to that. So this is the selection. Everything here, you will not really need a lot of it, but this is magic one, quick selection, crop. Uh, this is for the color picker. This is blemishing. This is more for actually using on photo editing, so we won't really be using that much at all, if at all, on making graphic design. Uh, this is paintbrush tool, stamp tool. This is something else I don't really use much myself, but you, some people do actually use it. This is the eraser tool. This is just going to help us clean up any uh, highlights or anything we made. Gradient tool, paint bucket, blur. Uh, these won't be used as much either. Burn as well. Text, pen, and path select. We don't really use path select. However, we do use this shape button. And let me run through this shape and let me go ahead and start to make our first UI. So over here, um, let's just start off with a really simple square shape. And you could change the fill up here to whatever color you'd really want. So um, I tend to actually use blending options over here. And this uh, allows you to change up layer styles. This allows you to do bevels, strokes, inner shadows, inner glows, satin, all that stuff. We'll be using pretty much all of it other than texture a lot of the time. 
So I like to choose color overlay and this lets us get our RGB color picker. So let's just go with a typical simulator UI, I guess. So bam, we have our first square and that's really all we'll need as of now. And now what I want to do is I want to duplicate that layer. I want to select the layer copy or usually the one that's underneath because we're going to be using our, this as our drop shadow. I like to create a separate layer or you could just do it through blending options, but I just do it because if I want to make a change, if I want to make a certain highlight on the drop shadow, it's a lot easier. So let's drop down with the arrow key and let's go back on here and go back to color overlay and make this layer a bit darker just to make sure everyone knows it's the shadow. Just like this. And now what we can really do is we can select both of these, hold down enter, click on the layer you want it to go to, and we want to press merge layers. Oops. Uh, first, I'd recommend rasterizing. Ooh. Rasterize on here. It's a bit different on Photoshop. So we go here back to merge layers and now we should have a perfectly nice little square with a drop shadow. Keep in mind guys, I'm just doing something really, really basic. Uh, you guys can get a lot more complex. And now what you wanna do is go back to layer style and we'll throw on a simple stroke. And for the stroke, we can tweak the size into something a little bit thick, nice. And I'm just gonna go here, go even a bit darker than the stroke. And bam, we have a basic background with a stroke and a drop shadow. And now what we can do is we can add some highlights. So a lot of the time you'll see people on Photoshop, a lot of the time their UIs just pop out just because of these little ellipses that I use. And the easiest way to actually do that is just get a normal ellipse, ellipse circle, whatever, and then put it over here, oops. Use Alt-T to transform on here. And then, ooh, might be giving you guys wrong directions. Oh, or just select it. Uh, Bam. And now what this allows us to do is all I did was press Alt T and then hold it down to here. And this pretty much covers it up like this. And now, so you might be wondering, how do I make this look like a shadow? It's very simple. All you do is you turn down the opacity. And bam. And so now, like I said before, so what I see wrong with this UI is I don't like the color I chose. It's a bit too light. I want it to be a bit more darker.